Welcome everyone to the module basics of n dynamics and n particle semitas. So before we start creating the n particles, let's take a look inside the playback settings. We need to go inside the animation preferences and inside the time slider we have playback speed set to play every frame which is most ideal for the dynamics where every single frame is required to be evaluated. All right. Notice we have playback speed set to the real time 24 fps which means for every single second we have 24 frames. Save this and now you are good to go. Let's have some quick changes inside the workspace. Click over here and go inside the panels. Under the panels we have the outliner. Close this and narrow it down. So this way you can able to visualize the different nodes as well as the objects existing inside your viewport. Now let's get started with the end particles. Click the option FX inside the menu set. Now inside the menu and particles under the section emit we have create emitter. I prefer to go inside the option box and make sure that we are working with the reset settings. Under the edit click the option reset settings and hit the create. The moment you hit create you'll notice you have three nodes listed inside the outliner. The first one is the emitter which is responsible for controlling the rate of emission of the particles with respect to the speed as well as the type of the emission. The next one is the end particle shape node responsible for controlling the overall shape, size, age, radius as well as the per particle attributes. The last one is the nucleus node which is the nucleus solver and controls the overall physics as well as the simulation of the particles with respect to the collisions as well as the interactions. Alright, let's grab the emitter node and pull this few units away from the base of the grids. Press Ctrl A to bring it inside the attribute writer and notice we have the basic emitter attributes. The emitter type is set to the omni. So this omnidirectional emitter will going to emit the particles in all the directions. Meaning particles will not have their own specific directions but they can move you know in all the directions with respect to the x, y, z axis. We also have the rate which controls the total quantity of the particles or total count of the particles. Right now we are having 100 particles for every single second. All right. It also means that for every 24 frames we have 100 number of particles existing inside the viewport of the Maya. Now let's do one thing. Let's play the timeline and notice the behavior of the particles. Well I was saying that the emitter type Omni should emit the particles in all the different directions but in this case the particles are flowing in the downward y-axis directions. The reason is pretty simple and pretty obvious. We have the nucleus node. The nucleus node is having its own forces. We have the gravity as well as the wind. It's the gravity which is basically affecting the particles. So instead of making the gravity zero from the entire nucleus solver, it is always a wise decision to disable the gravity of the particular nucleus objects. So we need to go inside the end particle shape node under the dynamic properties. Click this option ignore solver gravity. The moment you click this, you can notice that there is no more gravity affecting the particles. And particles are now getting emitted from this emitter in all the different directions. Let's also change the color of the background by pressing Alt B. Okay. Now it's pretty much fine. Now let's take a look at the speed of this attribute. So again we need to go inside the emitter node. And we have the speed which is set to 1 which is a very less or you can say lower value of the speed. Increase this value to the 5. Play the timeline and now you'll see your particles are moving with much higher speeds. We can also change the speed of the particles by using the attribute speed random. And this will going to randomize the particle speed. And now you'll notice that some of the particles are moving faster and some of the particles are moving slow. All right. Let's do one thing. Let's bring both these values to zero and play the timeline. Now you must be thinking that there is no particle emission but technically it is not the case. If we select the end particle shape node and go inside the 
topmost option, that is the count, you can notice that we are still having 354 particles inside the viewport. But we cannot visualize them because we have lost the speed. So how are we going to bring back inside the viewport even the speed value set to the zero? So go inside the emitter node and notice we have the min and max distance. This min and max distance is basically the nearest or the farthest range in which the particle can exist. So we can use the value, let's say 5, for the nearest value, that is the value which is nearest to the point of the emission and the farthest value, that is the max distance. I'll bring it to the 6. If we play the timeline, you can notice that now particles have started gathering near around the emitter. And we can also able to create a very nice sphere, a sphere of particles. So for that, we can make both min and max distance with the equivalent magnitude. Let's set the value of min distance to the 6 and also increase the rate, the rate of emission of the particles. Instead of 100, let's say we go with 1500. Let's play the timeline and you can see we could able to create a very nice sphere. Alright. We can also increase the timeline and now you can notice this is a perfect sphere of the particles. You can still count the particles with the help of the end particle shape node going inside here and now we have 11,500 particles. There is another workaround to visualize the particle count. You can go inside the display and go for the heads up display. Over here we have the particle count. And notice we have 11,500 particles. All right. Now you are good to go for your particle creation. And let's take a pause and I would like to move to the next clip where I would like to begin with the different emitter type that is the directional. Alright, so see you there.